the regression is going to hit a little bit. Maybe you're not going to see as many spike weeks. And the first one may or may not surprise some people, and that's Jalen Hurts. I'll give my reasons, and and Matt, if you want to chime in as well, I think that it ultimately comes down to the rushing touchdowns and moving the pile. Those are not things that are, are sticky, and we saw Jalen Hurts get a ton of rushing touchdowns, and then they addressed the running back position with DeAndre Swift and Rashad White this offseason. So I think that there's going to be more goal line options that are going to take away the fluky touchdowns or the one-yard scores that Jalen Hurts was scoring so much in this breakout year. What do you think, Matt? I Honestly, I don't think we've seen Jalen Hurts hit his ceiling yet as far as a quarterback in the NFL is going, especially as far as fantasy. He's always going to have that Konomi code cheat ability. Let's call it the way it is. I think if you're looking at maybe a bit of a downfall, it could be the loss of his offensive coordinator there in Shane Steichen there. That that's could have a role in production this season. But we know that that's going to happen, right? When you lose someone that you've been working with, that's helped coach you, bring you along since you're a rookie, it's going to affect you. And anyone telling you otherwise, they're just going to be a flat out liar. Now, will he drop off a lot? I don't think so. Whenever you have the ability that he can do with his legs and move the piles, as far as I'm concerned, those sneaks are still going to be there. The NFL did not address that as far as the competition committee is concerned. But do we even trust the running backs that they added, DeAndre Swift or Rashad Penny, to stay healthy this season? If they are, Miles Sanders was fifth in rushing just a season ago, despite everything that Jalen Hurts was able to do. I don't see DeAndre Swift or Rashad Penny being a top five rusher this season because I don't think either one of them is going to stay healthy. In fact, there's going to be times where they're probably both going to be out. It's going to be Kenneth Gainwell and Boston in there doing everything that they need to do. So I, I just don't see where that drop off, where that dip is going to be. I've got him at QB3 in fantasy. And guess what? That's basically what he was last season. And he didn't play in week 16 or 17 on a points per game basis. Hertz led all quarterbacks, averaging 26.8 fantasy points per game. Now, that average is going to go down slightly, probably. And I, I mean, he's going to be right there with Patrick Mahomes, QB2, QB3, whatever that looks like. So I don't think that dip is going to be there. A.J. Brown is still there. Devontae, Ad, or Devontae Smith is still there. Dallas Goddard is going to be healthy. Remember, Goddard missed some time last season, which hurt another option in this passing game. We're talking about guys like Quez Watkins was there. Con convoy, Britain convoy, guys that you can't even you don't even remember that are on the roster unless you're an actual Philadelphia Eagles fan. Now, right. Hertz improvement has been substantial in the passing game the last few seasons. I mentioned that Konomi code 750 plus rushing yards back to back. That is a lethal combination, especially when you're completing 66.5 percent of your passes, averaging eight yards per attempt. And here's the big thing, especially as far as fantasies, he's not turning the ball over a 1.3 percent interception rate. So if he's still picking up points with his legs, if he's still passing the ball as well as any quarterback has done in the National Football League and he's not turning the ball over, he is going to continue to be in that top three quarterback conversation. And I don't think that's going anywhere. Does he hit as many points as he had last year? Now that's debatable because if he plays all 17 games of your fantasy season, he may actually go above what he did last season. So that's something to keep in mind here as we're looking at it because – like I said, he was QB3 last season, but he also missed two games. Yeah, hitting on the points per game and the total points, he's still going to be. I've been ca categorizing Jalen Hurts as one of the big three, the Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. It's pick your pick your poison. Last year, Jalen Hurts, 52.6% of the time, was a top five quarterback. That was most in the NFL the next two were Josh Allen at 38 and Patrick Mahomes at 37%. So it's it was a significant tier that he was accessing compared to the other quarterbacks. And then the other point, Jalen Hurts per PFF had plus three and a half points per game over expected per, per their data that they've curated. So certainly a player that we're both very bullish on this year. I don't see any... A, any narrative to drive Jalen Hurts outside of that top three, but I think picking among those three, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts is going to be gold for your fantasy team this year. Let's move on to perhaps one of the gimme picks for the overachievers.